you partial, part of the way there. So tonight, making his martial area storyteller's debut, we'd like to welcome to the stage, Dave Brennan. Thank you, Julie. Uh, I am a Minnesotan at heart. I lived here for 28 years in southern Minnesota before I was forced to go to Iowa for a job. Uh, so this is really my home. So it's really great to be uh, back and doing some fun stuff in Minnesota. Uh, my story involves uh, the senior year of high school and uh, the senior kegger that I'm sure that you've all, you know, probably experienced something like that as your uh, classmates end up and I know, you know, from looking at me, I look like the coolest person on the planet, <laughs> but I wasn't always so. Uh, I, you know, I was not very popular, but I wasn't like, you know, someone that people were avoided, right? I was just kind of in there, right? And I didn't like my classmates. None of them were very nice people or that great. Um, but the one thing that they were really amazing at was planning secret drinking parties, <laughs> apparently. So for the senior kegger at the end of the year, we're just hitting summer. Uh, to get out of you know the cops showing up and busting everyone, only four people knew where the party would be. And in order to find out where you'd go, you'd go to one of the four locations in town where one of those people would hand you a map to get to the actual party. So it was very top secret to actually get out there. Um, it's, it's the most impressed that I've ever been with my fellow classmates. Um, <laughs> But surprisingly, I was not, you know, one of those delinquents that was an actual drinker. I, my first drink was uh, before prom, and it was a wine cooler. So it's not like I was into any of that stuff. Uh, so as I was one of the straight-laced uh, classmates, people were very surprised that I was going to be going um, and possibly drinking. So I went with my friend Angie, and I was driving an old 80s Bonneville, which is like driving a boat. It's incredibly comfortable, it gets about three miles to the gallon, and I had to put a quart of oil in every other day. Uh, but it, it was beautiful. Uh, you'll see why that fits in in a minute. So we get the second map to go to the actual location. It's like half an hour away from town, uh, somewhere I've never been before in the middle of the country. And to get out there, you'd go from like a main road, you turn onto a country road, and then there would be a, a sudden turn onto a one-lane road that is filled with uh, trees and very tall grass, just enough room for one car to go about a quarter of a mile before it got to this big farm area. So we were in the middle of nowhere, literally. Uh, got out there. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, there, there's like a keg. Will you want some? Uh, yes, give me some beer, please. Um, I don't know, whatever. Uh, people were very surprised that I had a red Solo cup in my hand uh, during this party. And somewhere out there, there are at least seven pictures of people who took them of me saying, Oh, I got a drink with Brennan! I don't know why this was so exciting for them, but they exist somewhere. <laughs> and so while we were out there, we you know, made the rounds, and I had maybe half a cup. It's not like I was a drinker or anything. I didn't know. It, it tasted gross, right? Beer is gross the first time you really have it. Uh, but then it's amazing later on, right? Uh, but at that point, I, you know, and it's not like I was going to do anything. I was needed to drive out of there. I was just making an appearance. So we were there not very long. And when it was time to go, got back in the big Bonneville. Uh, but what none of us realized or, re you know, thought of the consequences was that the night before it had rained a lot. And so the dirt road and dirt path that we were all parked on had now turned to mud. And as I'm leaving, I back out of my big Bonneville, I start to go, and it's just mud. I had no idea. You couldn't see it because it was dark out. And I get stuck. And when you're in the middle of all of your classmates and you're trying not to be embarrassed, and I'm, I'm trying to rock it back and forth, nothing's working, and I'm just like, oh God, I hope they don't see me. Just let me keep moving. Let me keep trying to reverse it. I start to see some attention coming towards me. Not good, right? I don't want to have to deal with this. Eventually, the entire party comes to surround my car stuck in the mud. And I just want to get out of there. Like, I don't want to have to deal with any of this. So I kind of get out of my car. Um, people are trying to push. Uh, one guy says, here, let me do it. And I didn't even care. I'm like, yeah, sure. He hands me his pitcher of beer 
which was his fifth of the night already, the drunkest person in the party, I said, sure, get in my car and try to drive it. I don't know why I thought that would be a good idea, but I did it anyway. So he's trying to move it, it's not working. Some people start to push it some more. I'm holding this pitcher of beer, kind of just standing there worried, and I think, oh, I should probably help push my own car. So I turn to the girl next to me and I say, uh, hold this, i got to push the car. And she says, no, and just takes down her pants and starts peeing. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just, I froze. I, well, like, is this happening? Do people see this? So I gave it to someone else, avoided Teresa, the pee in public person, um, and went to start pushing the car. We managed to push the car a little bit, but it still wasn't unstuck. Another, probably the second drunkest person at the party, then hooks up a chain from his Jeep to my car. We managed to get it unstuck, except now it's on the other side of the mud from where I need to be. So, mud's on top of there. For some reason, I'm still letting Lenny, the drunkest person at the party, drive my car, and he says, I'm just going to gun it right over the muddy area. Okay. I say, okay, because I'm insane. Uh, he does it, and he gets across and onto safe gravel for the moment. I'm dumbfounded. He drives better after five pitchers of beer than I do normally, so it was very shocking. Managed to get past the embarrassment of that. Knew I'd probably never live it down. Uh, but then there was still one obstacle to get through, and that was the quarter-mile road filled with trees and tall grass right up to the sides. Now, through everyone driving back and forth on it to get in, and the rain, this was now completely pot, pothole filled. Just big chunks of mud everywhere. And I'm driving this old Bonneville. It's big. It's likely to get stuck again. I don't want to go through it. So I decide that I just have to drive as fast as I can to try and get through this and not get stuck. My friend Angie doesn't think that's quite the best idea, uh, but I say just hold on. Uh, so we start going, probably about 40, it's nighttime, it's pitch black, except for my headlights where you can see the trees right by the doors and the tall grass whipping through these potholes, jumping up and down, and she's screaming, kind of, ah, you know, let me out, right? Uh, no. So we're going, it's probably the closest to being a Jedi that I ever will be because I was so in tune with the road that I was just going, 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 didn't make a mistake at all. I didn't hit a tree, I didn't go off the road, I didn't get stuck. And we hit the end of the, the quarter mile and we get back to the main road. And we're like, we're safe, we're good. Oh, so lucky, gonna, never gonna live that down. Uh, we leave, turn onto the road, and as we do, in the background, I see three cop cars uh, coming to the sides. So we got out of there right in time. And that was the summer that I had a kegger, that people took my picture, I got stuck in the mud, and then used my Jedi mind powers to make it through that horrible, muddy mess. And I don't think I've been to a kegger since. <laughs>